Grace. Today we're speaking about why our prayers are not answered. I know a lot of times my prayers are answered, but many times they're not. Why do they not get answered? Yeah, so one of the reasons is that God knows, God can see more things than we can see. So there's a delay because God knows what's better for us. They're kind of similar to a child and a parent. Right. Okay, so then the second. The second is we are not mature enough, we are not dispositioned enough to receive that grace. Oh my goodness, we're immature. <laughs> right. <laughs> like All the right. use of a knife. And then there's a third, but we're going to leave that in suspense for... Right. Uh, for what you're about to listen to. So everybody, mm -hmm. welcome to this week's episode of Pete Speaks with Grace. Enjoy the podcast. <music> welcome to the Pete Speaks with Grace podcast. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here today. Yes, welcome, Pete. Let's have some energy today with the show. <laughs> How about that? You know, though, I'm going to start with something kind of like a, a bummer, you know, a little bit of a downer. What happened? I was thinking about um, prayers. I was setting up this app on my phone, mm -hmm. okay, because I wanted to make sure that I was, um, you know, there's a lot of different apps for prayers, and uh, people say, hey, Deacon Pete, will you pray for me? And I say, yeah, I'll pray for you. What do you want me to pray about? And then sometimes I forget, right? It just kind of falls through the cracks. Mm -hmm. I used to keep a list in my pocket, like a um, index card. I would write it all down. But now that I have this smartphone, I decided I would use an app that I'm using for my um, to-do list uh -huh. and create a prayer list. Wow. And I was creating it, and then I, I, I want to move things from, you know, I prayed for it today. Um, I just want to make sure I pray for it every day. But then if it's answered, I move it mm. to an answered column. That's a great idea, Pete. And that will be an affirmation. See, now that's not a bummer, right? That's really, uh, that's an thing. affirmation. That'll right. be an affirmation that prayers do get answered. It'd be, uh, it's going to be interesting to see that list grow and witness that prayers are being answered. Mm -hmm. so, but, okay. <laughs> but my issue... Uh -huh. What about those prayers that just linger on the prayer list day after day after day and don't get answered? Can I intervene for a second? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this Blessed Solanus Casey, who's going to be a saint canonized, right? Blessed Solanus, he, was, he used to keep a diary where he would note down the names of all those people who was seeking prayer, prayer, prayers from him. He would note them down, and over mm -hmm. the time, many of them are answered. And that's why people started re realizing that he has this gift of healing. Oh, yeah. So he was, um, he was finding that, hey, a lot of my prayers are being answered. I used to do that back, in the, back um, a few years ago. I used to have a kind of a method for doing that. And, and quite honestly, I found the same thing. I found lots of my prayers are actually being answered. You know, it's like... It's like um, Maybe maybe I was being distracted into thinking they weren't being answered, mm -hmm. but in reality they are. Right. So it, it's a good exercise to go through. What do you use? Let me ask everybody in the comments. We haven't been getting enough comments lately. Uh -huh. Slackers right. out there, right? Is that what we're going to say? No, so we don't want to They call reflect it. what we are doing. Sometimes we slack quite Sometimes a bit. Sometimes we slack, right? You could tell by the distance between some of our podcasts. Right. We had a right. we had a busy busy summer at the Pete Speaks with Grace corporate headquarters. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so when we do that, we cannot blame others for not commenting enough, Pete. <laughs> That's right. So go ahead and comment. Let me know what, what, it, what do you use to track your prayers and how do you validate that they've been answered? But then let's talk a little bit about those, those lingering prayers, the ones that don't get answered, and sometimes they're really serious prayers, mm -hmm. Right. Real bummer for many people. Like people even think there is no God because He's not answering my prayers. Right? It it could um it could challenge faith. Right. Right. When a prayer is not answered, especially if it's related to uh, a person's um, health, mm -hmm. if it's related to a loved one. You know, I was um, in in filling out the the prayers that I'm praying for currently. It's a mix between. Um, it's a mix between serious and not not as serious, right? Mm -hmm. But many are very, very serious. They're almost dire. Um, mm -hmm. Some are people that are um, 
getting ready to pass away. Others are for the soul of some people who have passed and for the comfort and um, peace to their families who just lost a loved one. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a, um, I think it's a good exercise for us to go, th- go through. Um, does Jesus, does God, um, answer our prayers? He does many times, but sometimes we don't see it right away. Mm-hmm. So very pertinent topic for today, especially you know, Pete. This yeah, week. get me into this topic for today, you know, because I'm having like a little brain, uh, yeah, a, a little brain moment, one of those senior <laughs> moments where I'm having trouble remembering. Yeah, why? Why does God? Why? Why do we feel at times God is not listening to our prayers? <sighs> exactly. So come on, God, why are you not listening? To my prayer. Why are you not answering my prayer? So I was saying this is a very pertinent topic, especially because we celebrated St. Monica and St. Augustine. St. Ah. Monica, August 28th, St. Augustine, August 29th. Monica is a, is a very prominent example for persistent prayer. She was praying for her son for years, for decades, in fact. And then and then she found, he, he, you know, he, she was able to rejoice when he actually got converted and, and had a powerful God experience. He was led to St. Ambrose, and then mm-hmm. you know he had this powerful experience of God, and he was a changed man and became one of the most important theologians of the, of the church, right? So Monica was actually married to a man who was a pagan, I believe, and he was very, um, he was not a very nice man, right. but he, um, I, I, I think this goes way back to the in the 300s, like 350 AD. So it's not like this happened yesterday. And the man, the the story goes that the man was not a very nice man, but he did not ever harm Monica. And Monica, you're correct. Monica had this persistent prayer to God for the conversion of her family members, Augustine being one of them, her son. And Augustine became one of the most important. Catholics in the Catholic Church. He was he became he was declared what's called a doctor of the church, and he also became a bishop in a in an, um, a country or a, a was that a country or is diocese a diocese called Hippo? I don't know if that's still North in existence Africa. today. Yeah, so it might not even be in existence today. So North he, African. So he became a bishop, which means he was he was managing an area as well as a doctor of the church, which means his writings were so important, they were adopted as teaching of the church and truths of the church. He, he was able to explain why the church does certain things, and that was during the, during the real development of the Catholic faith in the, in the early stages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you think of that? Not just Catholic church. I Did you even know I knew that? <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. You are impressed. See? <laughs> I'm impressed, Pete. <laughs> see, now what's the difference between a doctor of the church and a father of the church? So what do you guys think? So the if, the way I understand it, a father of the church would have known somebody who was with Jesus. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. once once that generation of people was passed, there were no more fathers of the church. Augustine would not have known, he was in like 350 AD, he would not have known somebody who actually was with Jesus and so had firsthand knowledge of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he was not qualified to be a father. Yeah, why it is so important for the Catholic Church especially, actually for the church in general, for Christianity in general, because the the first initial days, people who have witnessed the apostles and handed the fa- handed over the faith from them, received the faith from them, and passing it out to the subsequent generations. Right. Mm-hmm. So that is why there's undiluted intensity of, of God experience, experience of Jesus who became, you know, um, God who became man. Right. That's that's a, that's a most important thing when we speak about the church fathers. But it's an awesome thing, right? Because. Um in, in our particular faith, it's very important that we recognize the fact that Jesus lived and then mm-hmm. that he was crucified. Right. Now there's documentation that proves that. Mm-hmm. And that that he rose again. Christ right. has died, Christ is risen, Christ and then Christ again. will come again. So in the Acts of the Apostles, we read, we read when the apostles were trying to find a person to replace Judas, 
who betrayed Christ, their criteria was this. He should be a person who was who has witnessed the baptism of Christ, who walked among us with the living God, right? And then who also witnessed the resurrection. Those were the things that were that they were looking for when they were about to decide an apostle. All right, so let's uh here's a quiz question. Here's a quiz question. Everybody think about the answer and then Grace is going to give us the answer. What's the name of that apostle that replaced Judas? Give you two seconds to think about it. Give it to me. You said Matthias. What? Matthias. Matthias. Yeah. yeah, correct. Correct. Well done. Well done. So I was. I, I knew you would know the answer, Grace. You. Come you. you I mean, come on. Come on. We. We have. We have to um, quiz our audience every now and then. I agree, but this is such an evident answer. Everybody would know that. Everybody knows that. Let's yeah. get. Uh, I could. I could bring some people uh, that live in my household into this conversation <laughs> right now, and I guarantee you, they don't know it. So we were well, speaking uh, about Saint Monica and her persistence in prayer. So sometimes we feel God is not answering our prayers. So why is it that we feel God is not answering our prayers, or or why doesn't God answer our prayers right away? Well, we well first of all, we feel God's not answering our prayers because He hasn't answered them. They haven't happened. So when we speak about why is God not answering our prayers, there are three, there are many reasons for that. We are yet to discover many of those things. But then just to narrow it down for, for us, for yeah, for you, right now, yeah. Yeah. Three points? Three points. Okay, so the let's first, do that. Yeah, first point. The first one is God can see beyond what we can see. God is omnipresent, omniscient. He knows everything, right? God knows all. Yeah. So that's the first reason. So we will explain that a little bit, okay? The second reason, just mm -hmm. to give you a quick summary, second reason is that God... I mean, sometimes God delays so that we will be able to, we will be ready to receive the gift that we are asking. I can ask something right, right now, uh, but I'm not actually ready to receive it and fulfill it. So God will de allow a small delay there. Okay. Yeah, in a way, um, in, in a way when we were just talking about Monica, there was a long delay, but August, the prayer was eventually answered, not at the time frame that Monica wanted, but God had some sort of a plan, and Augustine became one of the greatest Catholics ever. Yeah, we will discuss about that too. Why there was a delay in Monica's prayer too? Okay. So okay. what about three? Third, third one is sometimes our own sins can prevent God's grace from reaching us, even if it's His time, even if even if God is so much willing to just shower it upon us, our sins can block the graces from coming mm -hmm. to us. Those are the three reasons for today. So that's like we have to do our part, right? Right. We have to be in relationship with God. Is that is the third one, and when we, um, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but is the third one tied into uh, when, when me, uh, when I'm, I, I'm I, I don't care about God every day, every day, nothing happens, and then something bad happens to me, and it's all of a sudden I'm on my knees praying, God, mm -hmm. why did you let this happen to me? Mm -hmm. Right? And maybe... Yeah. Um, Maybe we need to have a better relationship ongoing. So, but a quick note on that: sometimes, even if I am in utter sin, and at a moment of distress, I'm calling out to God. Sometimes a prayer gets answered right away. So, so people who are, you know, constantly praying might think, okay, he was a sinner. He changed overnight, and then he prayed, and God answered him. How? Where is justice here? <laughs> people can like the, the the prodigal son and his brother sort of thing. Oh but, my gosh! Yeah. But but I should. You know, we have to point out why it is so. So a person who's totally in sin was, you know, met a, met a terrib terrible incident and then wanted to ask God, God, please intervene, and God answers. The reason, one of the key reasons for that, there could be many because we're not God, right? So we don't know, we don't have his vision yet. But one very apparent thing is this. When that person called out to God, he was actually humbled so much. He has reached that lowest point of his life. And that is humility, actually. Mm -hmm. When there is humility, it actually chases out our ego, it actually, so that makes our soul so much receptive to God's graces. That is why the prayer was answered right away. Yeah, so that's great. So I, I, um, I was thinking about that too. We, we always should remain humble, and that's why um, creating a prayer list can be very helpful because it can help us see where God is actually active in in our prayers. It helps us helps us to you know. Hey, these prayers are really being answered. 
Um, okay, so let's look at that first one. God can see beyond what we can see, right? God can see beyond what we can see. This relates really well with the um, the journey to the promised land. Mm-hmm. And I could just imagine, you know, well, I, I can't even imagine what they went through. An entire generation of people were wandering the desert and were unable to enter the promised land. And they had asked God to, to free them from slavery. So the, the story for people that don't know it, um, the Israelites were in slavery to the Egyptians. We know that story, right? They, mm-hmm. were, um, they prayed to God, all different things, but the, the key prayer was, we want to be free. We want to be free people. So God led them out of Egypt. They even got stuck at the Red Sea and God parted the Red Sea with a miracle. And then they were um, promised a new land Mm -hmm. and they were on their way to the new land, but they were wandering in the desert. The new land wasn't available to them for 40 years. Right. I mean, they needed a GPS badly. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So actually, many many reasons for the delay. That was right? terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even recognize that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I know. You just ignored that totally. <laughs> but, that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I was just wondering where oh, oh, these people. They, I mean, how how big is the area? Forty years wandering around. You think eventually they would uh, find their way to this promised land? Right. So initially, God God was speaking with Moses, and what Moses asked the Pharaoh was three days journey into the wilderness so we can worship God. That was a reason. That was the context in which Moses was asking the asking Pharaoh to let the Israelites go from slavery to mm-hmm. worship God. Right. But then it took 40 years. In between, we can see many times people would complain against God and actually revolt against Moses and Aaron, saying that God brought, you brought us into wilderness to die here, perish here without food, and we are dying. So, and and even there's a point when they are actually trying to elect a person to lead them way back to Egypt. You know, that sort of a revolt. They were about to stone Moses and Aaron and, you know, all those things. Why? Because they were feeling God is not answering their prayer. The promised land, the promised land, but where is it? That's one thing. And the, it, it, This whole story of the promised land kind of fits into all these three points that we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. How? The three points. The points of God can see beyond what we can see. Right. Okay, God, yeah. uh, there might be a time lag for a reason. God has a reason for this 40-year delay. Mm-hmm. And sin can prevent us from right. receiving yeah. the graces yeah. that are out there for us. Yeah, these three reasons can be really understood from this whole, uh, you know, exodus of Israel. That's what you're saying. That's right? what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. So those three reasons. <laughs> yeah. um, so let me, let's can we look at those real quick? Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at the first one, and we'll we'll just kind of tie it together. Just make sure we're all on the same page here. God can see beyond what we can see. Mm-hmm. You said he's omnipresent, right? Is that what you said? Omniscient, yeah, omnipresent. Yeah, so he's he's everywhere. He's uh, he's everywhere and in and everything. Seeing all things, he sees all. He knows. He kind of knows what's um, good for us. So he saw, he saw for them that yes, they were going to enter the promised land, but he saw that in order for that to work out for them. They had to go through some type of a, um, I don't know, like a, almost like they had some lessons to learn, right? They had to uh, more solidify their relationship with God. There was a lot of backlash against God for things like food. You know, think about, we hear, hear the story about the manna from heaven, water, uh, the heat. Um, Moses uh, went up to the mountain and they're creating idols. So there was a lot of, I'll call catechism necessary for them so that they could enter this promised land and be the Jewish people that God expected them to be that would eventually become the people that the Savior, his Savior, is born from. Beautiful. Right? Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, when we say there there was delay for 40 years, like one Mm -hmm. whole generation passed, 
before they could enter the promised land. When initially the promise was, or, or almost, it seemed like it would be just three days. And right? Moses never entered the promised land. Right. Right? So, yeah. So when we look at it, the first thing that, that we should understand is, yes, God, I mean, it, it didn't happen that they entered the promised land right after the three days. It wasn't that soon. Whole gener- I mean, most of those people, or in, in just ex- exception of, Caleb and Joshua, with the exception of these two, all other people passed mm-hmm. before before the whole Israelites could enter the promised land. So when we look at that, one important thing that we should understand is, yeah, God allowed that delay, allowed that delay, but he fed them all these years. So even when the Lord allowed that delay, he was providing for them. It's not that he just left them there and then perish in the wilderness. No, he, they were very well taken care of. They, yeah, you know, they could uh, be very unappreciative, though. Right. 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 Very, that's, that's the problem with the humans. I have it many very times. Very impatient. Right, right. Oh, initially the manna falling from heaven was like a miracle, and they're like, yay, but then after like 40 days of eating it, they're going, this is, you know, yeah. this is uh, not only, good. Yeah, we only have this manna now. We got to eat this junk right. for, and, for, for years to come. Yeah, and then God gave them quail, right? So when they wanted meat, God gave them meat. So just think of that. Like, without thinking about the 40 years delay. If quail think, is delicious. <laughs> 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 and they also lay eggs. I so I bet they had eggs too. I don't know about that. I bet they did. <laughs> anyway, so so you know what? In the wilderness where there is no farming, there are no shops to buy anything, okay, and they are just I mean, they're just wandering or maybe traveling across the desert, but they are getting food every day. Manna and even even for, I mean meat if they want that right and if they don't have water water from the rock honey from the rock and all those stuff so God is providing them all those forty years and we see that even the sandals did not wear out in the after walking continually for forty years so how good providence was was given to them was shown to them by God right and what are we talking about how many people here just uh, just ballpark hundreds it. of thousands of people. Hundreds oh, of thousands. Yeah. So, so we have to understand why Israelites were cap- were in captivity in Egypt because they were in slavery because they were like prolific multiplication, prolific reproduction. Right? They were they were increasing in numbers, and the Pharaoh and the Egyptians were afraid that these people would take us over because they are so great in number, such a great multitude, and that's the people who are coming out of that country, Egypt, and then traveling to the promised land. So God is feeding them not just 10 people, right? Hundreds of thousands of people every single day for 40 years. He All did right. that. So why the time lag? Yeah. So that's in the point number two. Why, yeah. why, come on, why, for, why, why does God sometimes wait so long for prayers to be answered? I mean, I could have something on my prayer list for you know, a month and then boom, it gets answered. Right. So one of the so two, three things, the second point would actually tie into our second major reason, which is the time delay, right? So the mm-hmm. so first thing is, of course, because God knows more than we know, right? So when we see, when they go into Canaan, we see that the the, the land of Canaan is, dis, I mean, um, displaced in, in a course of time. It's not done right away. And one of the reasons that many, many people, many countries are already there, actually God is powerful enough to route them out, out of that place totally, evacuate them for this promised chosen generation. God doesn't allow that. It takes a while before they could actually captivate the whole land. So, so you're saying that the promised land was already occupied at the time and they, yeah. had, to, um, they had to wait their turn before it... Um, it was ready for them. Not exactly. They were Canaanites. Many people, they were worshipping other gods. So one of the commandments God insists that Israelites would do is that they should evacuate the whole place. Every other nation should be displaced. And the reason is that they have multiple gods. If the Israelites are in their presence, they will. these idols would tempt, you know, yeah. would become a cause of leading them away from this one true God, which is a revealed God, right? All the other idols are human imagination. This God does that, that God marries, and, you know, their gods are like 
our, our, the human beings because that's their imagination. So God didn't want Israelites to be polluted by the idols or the strange like right. worships of all those people, culture of those people. So God wanted them to be to clear the land out of all those influences before this His chosen people could actually practice the law, practice the moral code that He has revealed to them and walk a life in union with God. Okay. So, so what about us, practically speaking? What about uh, the time lags that we have, you know, and the yeah. patience that we need in, in having our prayers answered? One more thing. One oh, okay. more thing about displacement of those people. So in, very clearly we read that in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, 2, where we see that God says if, if we displace the whole people out there and the Israelites are going to stay there, there will be so many wild animals, and wild animals will be difficult to master by the small group of people. So we need people so that uh, you know other things will be taken care of. So about wild animals, right? So it's actually a very practical, mundane thing. God thinks of that. He thinks if His people is left alone in that in the promised land, there could be other factors that would destroy them eventually. So there should be protection for them. So God is taking care of all those things. Israelites doesn't they don't know what is out there. But so God while they can were wa that. wandering the desert, God was in the background getting things all set up for them. Right. Yeah, that's one thing. Secondly, as you said in the beginning, you hinted about that, Pete. Like they should have the disposition to accept the true nature of God. Right? They were not appreciating manna. They were not appreciating anything that God did for them. They didn't understand that their clothes are not worn out. Their sandals are not worn out. They didn't notice anything. They actually saw every single day, every single day, pillar of you know the cloud by daytime to shield them from the sun. And during night, it's a pillar of fire to guide them. Just imagine a people wandering. No, no I cannot say wandering even. Walking through the desert, but this pillar of fire guiding them? Is that really possible, right? right? And they saw God splitting the waters before them so that they could walk on the dry land. After seeing all those things, they could still question God. So that is how we are. When we say that our prayers are not answered, we forget how God is taking care of so many other thousands of things, right? That's so right. we can be a little more appreciative. So generating that gratitude aspect, that would be very good to reach the answer for our prayers. Yeah, right? we have to be thankful. So second thing, there's a time delay. So one easy thing to understand that is that, you know, suppose there is a child, he's like in the first grade, and he's he wants a knife to play with, okay? His mommy, will she allow him to play with that? Yeah, no, of course not. Yeah, but suppose after like 10, 15 years, he's now an adult, and he, he wants to use a knife. Will his mommy say that, no, you cannot use it. You might harm yourself with that. Right. I see what you're saying. Say. Or maybe so, it's like a, a boy who goes to Boy Scouts. He learns how to use a knife properly. And then um, they they actually get a um, certificate, a little card that says they're certified to use their pocket knife. Right. Did you know about that? No. Yeah, that's in the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. They teach They teach the boys the utility of the knife and how to use it. Right how to properly open it, close it, pass mm -hmm. it to another person yeah. so that they don't harm themselves. Yeah, now you know how to use knife. So that is a time delay. So over time, we learn so many things. For example, take the example of Monica, right? She was praying for St. Augustine, Augustine, her son, for so many years. But Augustine should reach a mental situation where God should be the I mean, his, his, dis his disposition should be so suitable to accept God. Right, so, till so God he wanted the, him to be ready to be prepared. So, um, to, to in the same way that you were just describing these Israelites, right. God w wanted them to be ready, and He wanted right. the land to be ready for right. them. Right, right. Nice. Even though they were impatient, right. um, He was He was actually doing His work. Right. So, if the Israelites are taken into the into the promised land right away, it might be like giving the knife to the child. It will be detrimental to his well-being, right? So it will be detrimental to the progress of the chosen race because they can be devoured by the wild beast there, right? Mm -hmm. That's a mundane, but I'm sure there will be plenty of other reasons why God allowed that delay, but at least we can spot this one. So there, so that's one one way of accepting that there's a time delay. But you know, just a side, just a you know, aside to that conversation, there is one person who can change that time delay. 
there is time delay in many of our prayers because we should be dispositioned towards receiving that gift and so many things. There's one person who can change that, and that is... <laughs> I have no idea. Me, Blessed I guess, Mother. right? Oh, Mary. Why? <laughs> Why? Why do I say that? Reading at Cana, Jesus says... I Don't should have you known s- that. That was a trick question. <laughs> yeah. Don't you see that my time is not yet come? Mama. No, she didn't say mama. You no. like turn that on me, right? You turn, <laughs> I asked you the question about, I asked you such an easy question and then you turn it on me. <laughs> that was a very easy question though. So Mary goes to Jesus so, with her, with our requests and pray, and, yeah. and of course Jesus is not going to deny his own mother. Yeah, that was actually, Jesus said, my, my time has not yet come, but the time came. Mm-hmm. God said, my time has not yet come, but his time came because his mother intervened. So when we have prayers which are delayed, probably she's the one that we could ask, right? But that's just, just a side note to what we are speaking. And let's be a little honest here, okay? Mm-hmm. Truthful. Mm-hmm. Okay, truthful. Truth in the um, speak in spe- in our speaking. Mm-hmm. Uh we don't know, right? We we don't know everything that God is doing. We just don't know. You know, and there are prayers that go unanswered and we don't know why and other prayers that are answered we don't know why. It's not some of, some is not meant for us to know. Some could be like you said it could, something might be unreasonable. Let's uh let's admit that, right? Unreasonable. Be like me saying, God, I'm praying every day that God you you make me as active as I was in my 20s. Well, I'm I'm not in my 20s anymore. I'm in my 60s. So it, you know, it has to be um it it we 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 can't expect our prayers to be uh, magic, right? We have to be realistic with uh, who we are, where we're at in life, right. and um, and how God can uh, help us. That brings to the, our final point. Yeah, the, the final one. Point. You know, so that the final point is that sometimes our sins can block the grace of God from reaching us, even if it's time, even if like God has prepared everything mm-hmm. and we have also the disposition to receive it in a way. But if we have sins which we have been repented and removed from our lives, that can prevent, that can cause a barrier and, uh, and, and prevent God's answer to our prayers from reaching us. So, I mean, a few things. Let's from name the, a few of those sins. Yeah, okay. in, in the context of the Israelites in the wilderness, again, like two people from that generation who actually went into the promised land. Mm-hmm. One was Caleb and the other was Joshua. Mm-hmm. Joshua, we see that when Moses will enter into this tent of meeting where he speaks with God and pray and be in the presence of God, that his face shines when he come up, when Moses comes out of the tent of meeting with God, his face is radiant, and people mm-hmm. wouldn't look at him. So he had to cover his face. I've never veil, heard this before, by the way. He, Moses had to veil his face so that people wouldn't be, you know, because it, there is so much of radiance in his face. So that is Moses. And Joshua, where is Joshua? His assistant in a way. Joshua is in the same tent, always present whenever Moses and God is in contact with each other. So what would be his face like? I'm not saying. Probably but, radiant. Right. And he was always there. Probably he slept there. I don't know. Okay. So that is Joshua. He was the one. He was, I mean, God says to Moses to anoint Joshua as his successor to lead the lead the congregation into the promised land. That's Joshua. So we know he's a person who lived the life with God. He was seeking God. He was seeking God. Okay. So second So person, he entered the uh, promised land, but Moses did not. Yes. Okay. So why didn't Moses enter the Holy Land is another major question. Yeah, let's yeah. not go into that. Yeah, that's why. It's, it's beyond our conversation today. But we will definitely discuss that. Okay, so second Fact person, of the matter is he didn't get in. Yeah. He, he didn't have a ticket. Whatever happened, he didn't get in. Mm-hmm. He didn't make it. Yeah, one of the, you know, right to me, one reason I want to say, because I want people to think that, God, I mean, you know, one reason is that wasn't the call of Moses. Moses was called to lead these people yeah, into the promised land. So his purpose was something else. Moses' life's purpose was to see God, receive the law for all the subsequent generations from from then to now to, to I mean, I should say till the end of the world. The moral call that Moses was, Moses received from God is God. Sorry, it's going to stay forever. That's right. That is Moses. So his life is fulfilled. So his we life... Live, we, we live by the law that Moses um, received from God. From God, right. Yeah. So Moses' life was 100% fulfilled. 
Okay, so we shouldn't think that there was something short shortage there in his life. That's okay. right. I'm okay. just joking around. Though. Yeah, but there there are people who think about that. That's why I just want to comment about yeah, that. But that's, that's just one of the one of the readings into that. There are many things that we could you know understand from that one one incident of Moses not entering the promised land. But here our focus is on Joshua and the second person is Caleb. So in, in, in the in the Bible, I mean, it's very clearly written about Caleb, okay? I mean, how he was a person who wholeheartedly followed God. That's what God says about Caleb. And only Joshua and Caleb went into the promised land because they led their life wholesome and pure before God, attested mm-hmm. by God himself, right? So that that brings us into this. So were they the leaders of the um, those who entered the promised land, right. Joshua? And, and Caleb. Caleb. Right. Okay. So, so when we understand that, a couple more things add to to add into that. See, we we discussed about Augustine. We discussed about okay, the prodigal son. Like like some people, they had a very bad life. In the moment of distress, they called to God, and they're right right away answered. And we said it's because of the humility that brings them down, stripping them of themselves, their ego, and they are dispositioned now to receive the grace. Right. So that humility is an important point. So in the Bible, we read that a humble man's prayer pierced the clouds. And and humble man will not rest until his answer comes, okay? So that is the reason, the humility. So again, let's let's also consider about sin, okay? In uh in in the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1, it begins with like this, okay? Why is it that God is not hearing your prayer? And then we read it's because your ha- your hands are polluted by blood. It's your own sin. It's your own sin that prevents God from hearing that. Maybe we can just read that, that Bible verse, Pete. Uh, Isaiah, one second, okay. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. So that is one important reason. Yeah, so w- way back, way back mm-hmm. in Isaiah, mm-hmm. he was wise enough to know that sin can separate you from God. And when you're separated from God, and then you're praying to God, you know, it's there's a... Um, I don't know. Let's just keep it a just like anything in this world. There's a disconnect there. So if we are not holy, it's like I'm a wicked man and I receive some magical powers. I will use it against others, people whom I hate, to destroy the world. But if I'm a holy man and I have I receive some magical powers, right? I will use it for the welfare of others to help them to save them, right? And also, like imagine, imagine a glass of Okay, I have a glass, a, a coffee mug here, and it's it's dirty. Okay, it had coffee that I was I was drinking three days ago. I just poured it out, and it's still dirty. Yeah, will you I, didn't wash it. Will I pour new coffee into that mug without washing it? I will not, because that will corrupt the new coffee, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the point is, and Isaiah was making this point, and we're trying to make the same point, is that um, this... Our our faith faith lives should be day daily lived lived daily, and we should we should strive to be as close to God as possible in our living. Right. And sin, especially serious sin, can pull us away from from God. It's in, in the same way that serious sin can pull us away from individuals. Um, if you're sinning against a spouse, if you're sinning against a friend. You know, you don't. Your relationship's going to suffer with that person, and in this particular case, I think what what ends up suffering is actually your prayer itself, because in, in a sinful state, you're probably not praying as you should be, and that that tie is not. It. So it's not like God is punishing you. Right. That's so. not how how. Just because your prayer is not being answered doesn't mean you're being punished. That was um, that was that was kind of old teaching, um, many many years Not back. Non Christian teaching, in fact. Non Christian teaching, right? Non Christian mm-hmm. teaching. Not Jesus. Jesus de, Jesus took away those thoughts. 
Right. So if I am sinful, if I'm like that dirty coffee mug, and if God gives his blessing to me, the blessing is polluted right away. So it's not because God is punishing me, but because I cannot receive that magic. I cannot receive that goodness right now because it will be harmful for me, harmful for everyone. So so maybe... And prayers so may be being answered in a way that we're not thinking and we're not... Um we're not considering that. Yeah. So what will happen in such situation? God is not reserving it, in fact, right? It's blocked by my own problem, right? So what can we do then? So so if we are consistently praying for something, one step that we could do is to take a piece of paper, list down our our sins and, and try to avoid that. In the sense, it's not actually possible for us to avoid sin like that, okay? We need grace. But what we can do is write them down and ask God for forgiveness. Maybe, It's maybe... like an examination of conscience. Right, right. Right. So... And the, the church always promotes uh, the value of an examination of conscience. Many times, uh, many people will do that at the end of every day, as a matter right, of fact. Right. Right? Yeah, that's a great practice to have. Okay, so... I, I'm trying to say we have to go to confession. That is the ultimate mm-hmm. washing away of the sin. But maybe we are not, uh, we haven't reached that point, right? So there should be a preparation. So when we have this problem, I'm stuck here. My prayers are not answered. I'm having a serious issue in my life. If I'm in such a situation, I, I sit back and I, I, I ask God, God, I know these are the sins I have. There are things that I do again and again and again. Habitual sins. I'm addicted to certain things, right? That's one of the one of the things that we can identify right away. And there could be sins which are which we have committed only once or twice, but they're very grave. We write them all down. Ask God forgiveness. Lord, I don't want this in my life. Just remove those from me. Ask pardon. Right. There's an exercise, and I saw this at the Eucharistic Congress, um, in a couple spots where people would write down a sin that's really been haunting them or bothering them. And they they just do this action. You know, they take that sin and they pin it to a wooden cross, the cross of Jesus. And then, then um, at prayer time, they pray for those sins, and they basically take them off the cross and they they don't literally burn them, but they basically burn them. They destroy them. They're gone. So actually, and it's 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 to show us that God's mercy is there for us, right? And what's left is the cross, is the is Jesus, is the resurrection, right. the empty cross, as a matter of fact, right? I remember sometimes we used to conduct retreats in India. I used to, especially youth retreats, when I'm leading them to confession, I make the young people, the kids, to write their sins like this mm-hmm. in a corrupt language only, only God and they can understand. And I, may, and I ask them to, you know, uh, fold them and crumble them and, and we collect them in a, in a basket that's passed around. So they are giving, it's in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. They are looking into the eyes of Jesus. They write their sins and throw it into the basket and we actually take it out and burn it. So they will know it's gone from my life forever, right? Yeah. So, so that's one, one, one step that we could do in our personal lives as a preparation to, to clean the vessel to receive the grace that we've been asking to God. Yeah, and I'm going to give one last thing before we pray. But it's, uh, you know, uh, who's the wisest Catholic you know? If you're really struggling, go speak to that person. Go speak to Grandma. Call Grandma. She would love a call. I always say grandma. Uh, yeah. Go talk to your mom or dad. Or, or somebody go, in the church. Go you, talk to you your see. brother or sister. Right. Or, or Somebody that. in the church is always praying and you know that person's good. Maybe you can approach that person too. Yeah. And sit, just sit down with them and talk to them, even about, about their faith and your faith, and see where it leads you. And it's not, um, like I said, there's no, there's no magic potion here. This is, we're... Faith is something that um, that that is with you every day, every minute of every day. All right. So, are you ready to um, let's pray? All right. So we have um, we're going to end with a, a short prayer, and Grace will lead us in prayer as she always does. And I think in this um, particular case, it was kind of a serious topic. Why are our prayers not answered? We want to make sure that we 
we ask God and are persistent, like St. Monica, in asking God for answers to the problems in our lives. Involve God in our life. Find a way to connect with him on a daily basis, whether that be through contemplative prayer, through reading, through some type of a devotional, whatever works for us. I think it's really important that we we re, try to reach that connection, that point where we we are with God in our daily lives. So let us all um, let us all pray, Grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Abba Father, we thank you, Daddy, for your great love for us. As we were discussing today about sometimes why we don't understand your intentions and we misunderstand you. Dad, we want to thank you as we acknowledge how many times have you actually answered our prayers and we forgot to thank you for that. Thousands of times, Dad, we ask you forgiveness for that. But now we also pray to you to open our hearts to understand your heart to open our minds to understand your word, that you wish that we all flourish, that we all have the best things in this world and we all have the best life in this world. That is your ultimate will, that we will have life in its fullness. May we understand you more, Daddy, and may we receive from you the graces that we've been asking for many years now. Dad, we pray that our sins will not stand as an obstacle preventing your graces from reaching us. Dad, we pray for a grace of repentance now to us and to our listeners that we will have a heart to renounce our sins and accept you and receive the graces you have in store for us. We also pray for the wisdom and patience and humility that can pierce heavens and reach your heart and bring forth into our lives your blessings. As a mother, you are the accelerator of time. Any time delay can be changed. Time will stand still when you intercede for us. Thank you, Mama, for praying for us. As we pray with every saint who has walked this faith journey, Saint Monica, Saint Augustine, and all of our dear saints, that we will learn to continue praying and we will receive the graces that God has in store for us which are much beyond what we are asking, which are, if you are asking for once more grace or blessing, God has in, has in store for us thousands of blessings, which we do not even know. And we pray that all those graces will reach us when we, when we renounce our sin and lead a life worthy of those graces. Daddy, we pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. All right. That was a wonderful episode. It went a little longer than I thought it would. I think we were just... Um, um, yes, it did. It's kind of funny, right? We sit together and we think, okay, this is going to be a small topic. Five minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes or yeah. 20 minutes, and then it goes up to one hour. Yeah, we've learned on, on that. So I think this one, oh, if if I had to guess, you know... You, 40 minutes? Probably about a 40, 40 45 minutes. And, uh, but, you know, if you like longer or shorter podcasts, let us know in the comments. We ask right. you all to join us on this mission, right? Join us on our Catholic Catholic journey. Together. Together. <laughs> all of us together on this Catholic journey. Right. So thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. Yeah, God bless you all. <laughs>